everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, please excuse the mess behind me. I can't sit on the floor in front of my books this morning because this week has been pain filled. Um, this is the first chance I've gotten to record and it's Thursday morning. It's been one of them weeks. Um, so I'm going to do all the books that I've finished up to this point, which is only three anyways. Um, or not only three. I finished three books. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm just going to go up to now. Um, I'm reading, I'm hoping to finish these, the next four by Monday. So, um, the first book I finished, <clears throat> let's see, just getting up the ratings here, is Brenda Jackson, um, Jared's Counterfeit Fiance, and it's, oh, book six. Book six in the Westmoreland series. And this is about um, Jared, who's a divorce attorney, who is a confirmed bachelor. He says that he's never going to get married because he's seen too many marriages break up. She is, oh, what is her name again? Dana. I, I think she, I don't know if she works in human resources. But anyways, it starts out that she comes into his office because her ex-fiancé has said he wants the ring back, the engagement ring. And she says no because he left me with all the expenses, the wedding, because this happened. They broke up with her two weeks before the wedding. So everything's paid for, no deposit. <clears throat> you don't get any money back, that sort of deal. And Jared tells her, well, you know, do you really want even more expenses of having to go through the legal ways? to get for him to get the ring back and so she gave it back fast forward a couple of weeks and he needs a date to um his brother's um girlfriend or wife's baby shower or was it a wedding shower i can't remember but it's a get together with his family and he just happens to meet Dana at a deli and asks if she would be his fake girlfriend just for the, or the time, you know, for the party and to get his mother off his back. And so she agrees. And while he's there, they're there. <clears throat> they're talking about the engagement ring and they're overheard by his mother. And so then they pretend to be um, engaged. And then he finds out his mother might be sick again with cancer. So he doesn't want to break her heart and ruin her um, treatments if she has to have treatments. So it goes on from there. I did like it. I gave it a four. <clears throat> Sorry, I got a frog in my throat. Um, yeah, the kind of little banter between them is, is cute. So that's the first thing I finished. Um, the second thing I finished was Louise Penny's A Fatal Grace. And it's book two in the Armand Gamache series. I gave it a four, but I had issues with it. There's a lot of fat shaming in it. A lot. The first half of the book is fat shaming. The second half, it, it occurs once or twice. But this is about a egotistical woman um, who thinks the world revolves around her. So she's a very entitled person and tells other businesses that they have to change their name because she has chosen that name like that sort of mentality and then she's then she dies and this there's two cases in this and then there uh there's a case of a vagrant who is murdered um so the vagrant you don't really know about um, Cece, you do. And she's, um, I'm not going to say I'm upset that she died because a lot of people in the book are not upset that she died. Um, including her husband and her daughter. So her daughter is the one that gets fat shamed. Um, she's 12 years old, 12 or 13 because her father doesn't even know how old she is. Um, she's, it 
you find out how much overweight she is, which is 50 to 60 pounds at 12 years old, 12 or 13 years old. They make her sound like she's 650 pounds. Um, she's this immense, huge person and it's, it's disgusting and it, it, it goes on and on. And I'm like, that's a bit much. And considering this was written in 2006, I think. It was published in 2006, so I thought that was a bit, um, wow, uh, yeah. And there's also one thing. If anybody knows what FINE stands for, it's effed up, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. In here, it's effed up, insecure, neurotic, and egotistical. And that, for some reason, that bothered me, because <laughs> I'm a very big proponent of I'm fine. And, yeah. So it's not egotistical, it's emotional. And it just, it, it's just a personal thing. It, you know, some people might think it's, think that way. It's just, that's me. But yeah, um, I didn't see where the whole entire murders were going or deaths, murders. Um, so yeah, the, the last little, like, it was like, oh, the last little chapter or two was, wow, okay, didn't see that one going, or coming, whatever, I'm tired. So yeah, I gave this a four, but there is a lot of fat shaming, and I did not like that at all, um, because they did it a little bit much. I, I can see some people's, but everybody was thinking the same thing, that she was, yeah, she, she was treated very badly. So, um, Armand treats her a little differently, but he still has that inkling that she's immense. So while he's comforting her and, you know, seeing her as a person, whereas everybody else in the book does not even see her as a person, um, there's that. So just be warned. And then the last book I finished was A Lot Like Love by Julie James, and it's book two in the FBI U.S. Attorney series. Sorry. There we go. I gave this a five. I listened to it on audio, and I loved it. Um, the only issue I had was the narrator. Um, oh, what was it that she did? Sometimes she didn't have the right inflections to her voice. Um, so one sentence was like, she made this statement incredulously and the author didn't do it incredulously. She kind of did it just with like a flirty question instead of like a, a what? So, but other than that, she had voices, um, so many different voices that you knew who was speaking, which was nice. And there are some moments that were like edge of your seat. Um, what's going to happen next? And then there were some moments that I was laughing out loud because um, I can't remember who narrated it. And it's on my phone and I'm recording on my phone. And I don't know how to do the, the words. I've tried with my editing software and it's not going to happen. So, um... But yeah, it was, what was it about? Okay. She's a wine store owner. And I guess I should still keep holding it up, but I'll turn it down a bit. Oh, come on. So she owns a wine store and her brother is in jail, prison. Excuse me. So bear with me. I'm just. Why is the brightness not coming up? Okay, so we're not doing that. So she owns a wine store. He is a U.S. undercover FBI agent. U.S. An FBI undercover agent. And let's see if I can hold it. Like, there. So she wants to get... Well, he needs to get into these bigwig... Um, uh, bar owner's office because he is part of a 
crime boss syndicate sort of deal. He's involved with this crime boss and they need to get the goods on this crime boss in order to arrest him. So she goes to his charity party every year. It's $5,000 to walk in the door. And so he, oh, he goes up to her and asks her to be his way in to this party, to be his fake girlfriend. And so he can bug the guy's office. And she's like, well, my brother is in jail. I need him to get out. So they agree. Everything goes somewhat without a hitch. There are a few little bumps on the way. And so then they have, because of certain circumstances, they have to stay dating in order for this thing to go through. So it goes on from there. It's, I loved it. Loved it. The banter between the two. The lack of communication was a bit irritating. Because it wasn't all that lack. It was just, it is what it is. But yeah, I gave it a five. I absolutely loved it. The author did a really good job on it. Or, sorry, the narrator did a really good job. Um, I had the option to read it ebook or audiobook, and the ebook was kind of delayed in getting to me. So I just figured I'd start it on audio and switch to ebook, and I just I stayed on audio and loved it. So, and I don't speed my audiobooks up, I just I want to take them as they are. And I just do them when I'm doing mindless computer work or listen to them when I'm on mindless computer work issues today speaking. Um, so yeah, I, I loved it. And I might be getting sick, so please bear with me. So currently reading, and these are going to be the only four books I work on for the rest of the week. So hopefully I'll finish them. I have been working, but I've been in a lot of pain. So it is what it is. I am reading. The first one I'll probably finish because I have to get it done. It's got to go back to the library soon. It is In Order to Live by Yomi Park. And it's about just uh, her story of getting out of, escaping out of North Korea, but not so easily. Um, it's not too detailed in her early life so far. Um, I am what? That far into it. And she's like eight years old, but it's, it's a lot of history. Not, I wouldn't say it's history. It's very easy to read. It's not a lot of info dumping. So it's just kind of setting up of why they left North Korea, I guess. But it's good so far. The next one I need to get back to the library is The Unexpected Duchess by Valerie Bowman. And I switched this out. I was going to read something else um, for one of my challenges. Ooh. Good rush. Sorry, just get the paper out here. I was going to read Something Unexpected. I can't remember the name of the author. And come to find out it's book two in a series. It doesn't say it on Goodreads that it's part of a series, but it is. So that one was to read uh, a cover with green on it. So I switched it to this one because I got to bring this back to the library soon anyway. So this is a Cyrano de Bergerac um, retelling. And she can be annoying. Um, but I can see why she's annoying. Um, her friend Cass does not want to be, um, courted by this Duke, new Duke. And so she's being her voice for her because Cass is so demure and, um, quiet and scared of flies that she's being her voice for her. And the Duke does not want anything to do with her. He thinks she's gorgeous. Like the girl, oh, Lucy. And so he thinks that this has a game that he's going to piss Lucy off by continuing to court Cass. Cass is in love with her cousin's fiance. So it's kind of a, she knows she probably doesn't have a chance with him, but she wants to leave herself open just on the small smidge. So she doesn't want to be courted. Her mother wants her to be courted because, you know, Duke money. Um, 
and Lucy has decided that she's going to speak for her. She's going to put herself into every situation where Cass is near the Duke. And yeah, that's about as far as I've gotten so far. But Cass won't admit because she doesn't want to be rude that she doesn't want him courting her. Um, and Lucy's like, just say these words. And she's like, I can't. So there's that. And then I'm also reading, did I put this? I don't know if this is actually part of a challenge or if I'm just reading this because it's easy reading. And it's Treasure Hunter's Peril at the Top of the World by James Patterson and Chris Grabenstein. It's book four in the Kid, kid tre or Treasure Hunter series. It's, it's a middle grade book. It's over the top antics about a family who searches for treasure and they're also trying to save the world by um you know ecology um recycling and stuff like that and taking care of the earth and so yeah and then i've only read two stories in here so far in fact i don't i gave the first one a three uh the four one is pretty the second one's pretty much a three as well but it's Summer Days and Summer Nights, 12 Love Stories, edited by Stephanie Perkins. So I've read um, uh, Libor Dugos and Nina Lacours. And one thing I did like, all the couples that are in this book are represented here. So that's the first couple. And then that is the second couple. So yeah, I thought that was cute. Um, just short stories anthology that I'm reading throughout August. Uh, I should probably read number three today, but we shall see. So those are the four books that I'm working on. Um, I haven't answered any comments. Like I said, I'm not doing the best in the last couple of weeks or the last week and a half, I guess. So there's that. Let me know what you guys are reading in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, the like button, and yada yada. Hope everybody has a wonderful day, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.